I'm just uh, going to use the force and get my glasses. Uh, today you catch me working on a, a landscape. This is in the style of Bob Ross. Um, I was asked to do um, a Bob Ross style painting for someone and um, I decided to do it in acrylics instead of oils but by the time I'm finished with this they wouldn't know the difference anyway so um, I've done one very similar um, as this on, on another uh, YouTube video so um, please look into that and I'll show you exactly how I built this up to look like oil paint. Um, I was looking on YouTube um, the other evening and um, I came across a couple of videos that I weren't happy with uh, that I'd done maybe year, last year or sometime and it's about brush techniques so what I decided to do um, is to use the time that I've got now and um, I'll show you a couple of different brush techniques um, but I'll, I'll do it um, a, a lot better than I did last time I didn't have a lot of time and I was, and I was in my old studio and it was leaking roofs and uh, Anyway, I've got all uh, the equipment now, I'm in a nice warm studio, lovely environment to work in, so I thought, okay, let's revamp a couple of these um, videos that I've put up already. So, um, without further ado, we'll um, have section uh, uh, this uh, video now into different sections, and we'll start with some brush techniques. I'm going to start with um, blending, so I'm going to turn the ambient light off. This is an old canvas that I worked on many, many, many times and um, it's very rough. But for this tutorial, um, this is all I really need. So I'm going to start with blending. So we need to get some gesso. And I've thinned it down just a smidgen. Let me see if I can get rid of that shadow. Now this is an easy way to put a sky in place. So I'll show you this method first. So all I'm doing it is applying a, a thin coat of gesso. Just in the area I want it. Now this is how I blend my skies in place. You can do it differently if you want to, but I just want to show you the blending technique. Now I've got myself a mister bottle, so this does dry on me. I can just finally mist it just to keep it workable. I'm now going to put a bit of blue onto my brush. And I'm just going to blend that in to the sky with a crisscross motion. And I'm going to work that down to my horizon line. very very lightly over the top and if you want to add a little bit more glue to the top you can Remember that you've got to work reasonably fast when doing a sky in this method. So the skies are always darker at the top and lighter down the bottom. So 
I've just put a bit of depth of colour in there and blend that in. You could also get um, a blending brush and very, very, very lightly you can blend in your work. I am hardly touching the surface of the painting. And that's your sky blended in. Now if you have got a little tip for you, if you have got some hair that's come off the brush, get yourself a little tweezers. And you should be able to just lift that off but that's not working you can always get a brush with a little bit of touch it on a bit of water there it comes he's coming there you are and then just quickly go over that again then and all i'm using here is a, a smaller blending brush because I put my other big one in my pot of water and we'll let that dry so we now come on to scrubbing and what I normally use is uh, a bristle brush for this and they get worn down quite a lot especially on the round edges so a lot of these brushes I can use as filberts later on uh, but you can see that one is just virtually disappeared and that's because of the, the scrubbing technique that I use. So I recommend a bristle brush but this is entirely up to you, it's a personal preference at the end of the day. So all we're concerned about with scrubbing is we get some paint onto our canvas and it's a rough application Of paint normally used for blocking in this is a blocking of color you can see um, another video that I've done on YouTube and if you have subscribed you should be able to get access to that no problem through my playlist and that will give tell you the difference between blocking in and underpainting. So it's a rough scrubbing motion. And this is just to give us an undercolour basically. So it's just a rough application of paint, basically get the under colour that you want, you're looking for, down onto canvas. Or what's commonly known as blocking in with colour. The other thing we can do with that is if we get ourselves um, a small bristle brush and some titanium white, you can use gesso and we'll scrub in some clouds.
Now there's numerous ways to paint clouds, but I like to scrub in the first coat and just keep blending and scrubbing and blending and scrubbing and blending. problem is when people do clouds they tend to think of clouds like that and they're not like that of course in real life so what I suggest you do is go into your back garden have a look at the sky take some photographs if you wish to give you an idea of what the, the clouds actually look like but there are no rough edges in clouds Very, very simple using a scrubbing technique and a little bit of blending. And you notice I haven't blended with any other colour in this particular example as far as the clouds are concerned than with white. So I've scrubbed in the, the main form and I can go in then and blend in some highlights of the cloud and then blend out the bottom of the clouds so they look a little bit more realistic so that's how I recommend you can do clouds and also using two techniques that I've just showed you which is blending and scrubbing at um, Moplin and that's nothing more than applying like several different colours at the same time um, in an unorganised fashion so you're looking for subtle changes of colour so what I'm going to do now is we'll mix a little bit of light green and then we'll just dab in some distant trees bringing in a little bit of yellow here and there in a little bit more green And that's a hedgerow maybe. I don't know, I'm just making it this up as I go along. This is not a painting, this is just a an idea.
and you've got much more time than I have to to play with these different effects. As you can see, you can quite easily build some forms and shapes. And please forgive me if this doesn't uh, sit quite right, but what I'm aiming to do is just to show you the modelled effects that you can get. We really do need to sit down and work with these techniques. So that's modelling. Uh, this results in an, a distinct change of colour rather than various subtle changes of colour. So it works great for skies and all types of underpainting. And you know you can put that as class as an underpainting, and you can go in and put more detail on it. And you know you've got your distance, you've got your midground. Uh, I'm just going to play around with the, the foreground slightly now and then. We'll move on. Okay, please forgive me for the crudity of this um, this masterpiece, but um, I just wanted a it's a demonstration of what you can do. And uh, so we've put we've done our scrubbing in. We've also done um, some modelling, and we've also done some um, feathering. I'm blending. 